Hi, this is Bad Influence. In this week's show, our panel reviews Super Alest on the snares. And I'll be looking at a new way of using a computer to produce ballets. And an exclusive report on last week's future entertainment show in London. But first, this. This is the new Amiga 1200. Released next week, it'll set you back a cool £400. Now, I know the Amiga's been around for eight years already, but this new machine is being sold on its fantastic graphics and colours. Apparently, it has up to 17 million different colours available. Whatever that means. Uh, popular games are being rewritten especially for it, games like Zool. But, but what's the difference? Well, have a look at this. Here's the old Zool that we all know and love. And now, through the wonders of modern technology, the new improved Zool. Notice how the foreground and the background are moving relative to each other? Sims will scroll more smoothly and run much faster. This is a specially written version of Nigel Mansell's World Championship. And it's so realistic, I'm having a bit of trouble staying on the track. If Nam Rude were here, he'd probably tell you that the uh, A1200's got 2 meg of memory and a 32-bit processor. But mercifully, he isn't. However, if you're thinking of upgrading your hardware, beware. One third of existing Amiga software won't run on this machine. The trouble is, nobody knows which third. Not even the manufacturers. Ah, boot up, slimy furtless. Nam Rude here with more backdoor cheats for you jumped-up joystick jugglers. This is for a game with two names. It's called Legend of Galahad on the Mega Drive and Leander on the Amiga. <laughs> this twice cheat works for both games. All you have to do is type in L-T-U-S as a level code, then you get infinite lives. So, <laughs> I can never die. Eat dirt, Johnny Guardian. <laughs> An everlasting Nam, what a horrible thought. Now it's time for this week's game reviews. Our panel have been looking at Super Alest on the snares. What do you think of it? It's a really good game, I'm just getting into it at the moment. Well, leave you to it. It's a ferociously fast space shoot em up with loads of lethal weapons and power-ups. Here's Lakesh. I've got to admit that I don't like shoot ups very much, but Super LS is excellent. It's fast and it really moves along. It's very addictive as well. And if you die in this game, you die for a reason. You messed up. This guy's kind of hard, so I've just used a smart bomb to kill him off. And in this game, there's quite a few power-ups to, to be collected. Um, they're very lethal, and if you power them up, they make them even more lethal. You can also change the way in which you shoot, which is a good idea. The graphics and the sample voice are arc make the game more arcadey. And every time you progress through the game, there's something new to see. This part's kind of easy, and it's on a short game, which is for people who just want a quick blast. The backdrop in the game is really good, and it gives the game a good 3D feel. Oh, I'm dead. I thought this game would be for shoot 'em up fans only, but I think this I think most people would enjoy this game and just look at that end of level sprite. This game's what I call value for money. I like this game, it's very addictive, and I think the weapons were brilliant and it looked great. The graphics are certainly excellent. I know I'm in a minority, but I just didn't find it playable. This is a really exciting game, it's fast and you get really absorbed into it, I'd definitely buy it. And so the final scores for Super LS. The boys gave it 5 out of 5, and the girls gave it 5 out of 5. Good scores all round. And so our panel loved Super LS. Giving it 5 stars means it's a Jurassic game. They can award as low as 1 star. What does 1 star mean? <laughs> Turkey. But remember, our panel is made up of people who actually buy the games. But now, for something completely different. unusual because it was written using a new computer system called Lifeforms. It was written by choreographer Mark Baldwin, who also performed it with Christine Tanner. How does it work, Mark? The screen's divided into three. Here we have a dancer, and I can get the dancer to move in whatever fashion I want. He moves just like a human would. All the joints move in quite a human way. 
Here's the left thigh moving from the hip socket. Can it do anything humanly possible? Yeah, it can do anything humanly possible and a lot more. So I have to be careful as a dancer and a choreographer. I know what a human can do. Oh, I see. So it couldn't sort of jump. Yeah, you couldn't jump like that and sort of stay like that forever. Let me see what he's doing here. This is the pelvis. See, he's absolutely left the floor. Yeah. There we are. But what's this? This is the stage. So you can see where your dancer is in the stage. And um, I can also make pathways for the dancer. You can shift around or I can make him turn around. I can make him jump in the air. But no one could jump that high. No one could jump that high or in that shape. But as a choreographer, I would actually have someone come along and lift them. So it's up to me to interpret this material that I'm making up on the machine. So you have to use your common sense. Yeah, you've got to use your common sense. What's this? This is the timeline. It's like watching a movie. These are all the frames of the movie. In the first frame, if I've got the dancer doing this, and then if I move along to frame five and find another shape that I like and put it in frame five, the machine will actually um, connect frame one and frame five for me, so I don't have to fill in frames two, three, and four. So the dancer's in one position, and then you say five seconds later it'll be in another position, yeah. and the computer fills it in for you. Yeah, thank so God. So can I see a <laughs> phrase from the uh, dance? Yeah, sure. This is one, it took me quite a while um, to make this one, because I'm quite new to it, but um, and if you're doing a, a movement that is quite small, and movements uh, it doesn't take so long but if you're doing broad gestures you can do it quite quickly it gives me it's, it's like a visual tool can i see christine doing that yeah christine knows this phrase so would christine have worked out this movement from seeing it back on the computer well i learned it from the computer and then i showed it to christine and she's doing her own interpretation of what it is so what are the other advantages of using the system well the advantage is that i don't have to hire a studio and dancers and i can choreograph at 10 30 at night and I don't need loads of space to do it. Has the system been used much? Yeah, the system's been used for about three and a half years by an American choreographer called Merce Cunningham. Um, and in fact, he's done a piece for Rombe Dance Company called Touch Bass. Well, thanks for showing us that. Thank you. And Touch Bass is being performed by the Rombe Dance Company, who are currently on tour, and dates and details are in the data blast. load of scrotty rubbish. I learnt to dance from the software called Street Fighter 2. <laughs> anyway, this is a cheat for battle toads on the NES. When the title screen appears, hold down A, B and down, then press start. This is a totally awesome cheat. Because when you start the game, you start with five toads instead of three. <laughs> What do you think about that, then, slimy? Good, isn't it? All of NAM's hints, tips and cheats are available in our Data Blast. To access it, you should know the drill by now, but I'll show you one more time. Video the credits at the end of the programme, and then rewind them and play them back to yourself. But don't play them back at full speed. Use the pause and the frame advance, or the jog button, whatever it's called on your video, and you should be able to scroll through up to 50 different pages of information completely free, gratis, and for nothing. Last week saw the biggest games event of the year, the Future Show at Earl's Court in London. You weren't there? Don't worry, I was, and I took a Bad Influence film crew with me. If computer games are where it's at for you, then this is definitely the place to be. There have been thousands of people here at Earl's Court over the past four days. In fact, at one stage on Saturday, there were so many people here, they had to close the doors, and that nearly caused a riot. So what's the big attraction? That is, see it at the bottom. This is where the future is, virtual reality. This is where I look at my most attractive. If you want to take one of these home, it'll cost you 40,000 pounds. Yes! Sorry, I shot somebody. Really weird. You can walk around and see in the world, and then when you put your hand in front of your face like that, you can see your own hand, and then you've got to shoot this dude in a white t-shirt. Because the weird thing is, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Because you can't see anything, but it's really good. This is Road Rash 2. The winner of the competition gets a leather jacket. 
Sonic 2, the first chance for the public to play the game. What do you think of Sonic 2? I think it's wicked. Have you played Sonic 2? Yeah. You have? What did you think? It's brilliant. Give me five, Sonic. And Tails, well, how do you do? All right. Bizarre. Quite bizarre. For me, it was time to attend the big event. The last few weeks, thousands of people all over Great Britain have been battling for the title National Computer Games Champion and the top prize of £10,000. We're now down to the last two, and here they are. Alan Brett from Nottingham and Tony Eaton from Stafford. Gentlemen, can I ask you first, to get to the standard, how much blooming playing do you do? Uh, about four hours a day, sometimes more. Four hours a day, what about yourself? been recently doing about five hours a day. You play loads of games, what's your favourite? PGA Tour Golf on the Mega Drive. Alan? Um, Street Fighter 2 on the Super NES. And if you were the champion and won £10,000, what would you do with the money? I'd put it in the bank and get the interest. Very wise, and yourself? Uh, I'd get a season ticket to the Wolves first and then a Mega CD. Three, two, one! <laughs> The lads have to play three rounds. The first game is Lemmings 2. This is the first time anybody's seen the game. Alan wins that round and goes on to win the second round playing Sonic 2. Now it's all down to Street Fighter 2 for the grand finale. taking away a cheque for £10,000 and the title National Computer Games Championship 1992. Give a round of applause to Alan. Yeah! Chaos has just overtaken Earl's Court as one of the WWF wrestlers has just arrived. The big fella himself, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. WWF, promoting a new game on the SNES. Crusher Crane there. Since the show, we've had some bad news and some good news about Lemmings 2. The bad news is that it slipped. It won't be available until February. But the good news is it will have an exclusive sneak preview on Bad Influence next week. But now for some more games reviews. First up is Micro Machines. It's a plug-through cart, which means you've got to plug another game into it to make it work. Getting it in is hard enough, and getting it out is a nightmare. But is it any good? It's an overhead race game based on the Micro Machine models. You can choose to be one of 12 characters, each with different driving skills. Here to battle it out are Morgan, who's playing Super Cool Spider, and Robin, who's playing Dwayne the Unpredictable Genius. This is a really interesting game, because you race around different rooms in the house. I'm on a, we're on the billiard, billiard table at the moment. I'm, I'm a really um, erratic genius, and occasionally I get these brilliant bursts of speed. I'm just so super cool. I'll take this game with no problems. It holds no horrors for me at all. You know, I'm just in there. Here we are playing a different game of drafts from the normal. I've just won um, a bonus point. I got at least one screen away from my opponent. Ah, pure, pure that, that was. On this level, we're in tanks and we're firing at each other by pressing both buttons together. I can use tactics on this but you can only use it once before your fair uh, works out. Ha, I got you. Oh, very sly. You'll not get away, though. Perfect ah. shot coming up. Ah, got you. Nah, that's cheating, that was. I'd say this was quite an average game. And one of the big problems for me is that the, the earlier levels are far too hard. The thing that bugs me about it is it gets very samey after a very short time. It's not recommended. It's an unusual game, it's quite good, but I wouldn't want to play it over and over again because it's pretty boring. Micro Machines is a good idea, but it gets boring very quickly. The two-player mode gives it a bit of life. And the scores for Micro Machines, the boys gave it an average score, 3 out of 5, and the girls also gave it 3 out of 5. Next is Nigel Mansell's World Championship on the Amiga. It's a strange irony that this game should be released just as Nigel bows out of Formula One racing altogether. Bad timing, perhaps? Here's Claire to test the circuits. I like this game, it's really good. The graphics are really, are really brilliant. You can see the hands moving, it's like being in a real racing car. This is England now, and as usual, it's raining. Luckily, you can choose your tyres to match the conditions. You can have wet, soft or hard. I'd recommend wet for when it's raining. 
can also choose auto or manual gears. I like the tight corners. It's good that if you hit something, you still carry on. It slows your speed down though. The only thing I don't like about it is that it takes ages to load. If you haven't already bought a racing sim, this is a good one to get. I'd recommend this to my dad and he's quite fussy about his games. Mansell's had a big build up but don't believe the hype. There's too many of these kind of games already out and this is not the best of the bunch. Just don't waste your money on it. Racing sims aren't my favourite game and in my opinion this one's pretty boring. It's just ordinary. There's not much to recommend Nigel Mansell. The graphics are slow and jerky, there's very little trackside detail and there's not enough room on the road to overtake. And the scores for Nigel Mansell's World Championship. The boys gave it a poor two out of five, but the girls liked it. They gave it four out of five. Right, keyboard creeps. Throw away those biros that have four different colours and pay attention. On the title screen of Adventure Island on the Game Boy, press up, down, up, down, shake it all about. No, sorry. Right, left, right, left. A, B, A, B. All your levels are then listed on the screen. Fancy an adventure, Andy? Not with you, thanks. I was sitting in the Bad Influence office the other week when this computer disc landed on my desk. I stuffed it into my machine and this is what came out. A high-tech way of getting publicity for a new film called, not surprisingly, Sneakers. To get this far, I had to enter the password CTEC Astronomy. But I don't know the password for these other levels, so it won't let me in. Look, all it'll say is, access denied, try the character dossier. All I can get at the moment are these rather dull biographies of the actors in the film. There, for example, is Robert Redford. And if you go through, you can have everything you ever wanted to know about Sidney Poitier. Fascinating. The film is released tomorrow. It's about a group of high-tech hackers, the Sneakers, who are hired to test security systems. In this clip, they're trying to get government protection without giving away their hideout. I'm going to bounce this call through nine different relay stations throughout the world and off two satellites. It'll be the hardest trace they've ever heard. Now, this will measure stress in the voice of the person on the other end of the line. Not as accurate as a polygraph, but for today's purposes, it'll do. Who is this, please? It's my dime. I'll ask the questions. Who are you? Let's say my name is Mr. Abbott. True. They made the second leg. Mr. Abbott. Are you interested in SeaTech astronomy? I'm interested in all kinds of astronomy. Cute. They've got the satellite in Tokyo. These guys are good. We've got about 20 seconds, Bish. If I come in with what I know, can you guarantee my safety? Do you have the item? 15 seconds. Can you guarantee my safety? Where is the item? Can you guarantee my safety? Five seconds. Yes, I can guarantee your safety. Bish, he's lying. Hang up, they've almost got us. He's lying! Hang up, Fish! He's lying, he's lying! Hang up! Exciting stuff, eh? Now, I know the password for the next level is an anagram of SeaTech Astronomy. But I'm not very good at anagrams. Let me see. Scary motto scene? Scary. Last week's competition prize was four of these supervisions with loads of games. We asked you the names of the two droids in Star Wars, and the answer was, of course, C-3PO and R2-D2. This week's competition prize is a Game Gear with TV tuner, and the question is, what is the name of the cowboy outlaw played by Robert Redford in a movie? Sorry, necessary motto. I'm sure it's necessary motto. Answers on a postcard or stuck down envelope to the usual Bad Influence address, which you will find in the Data Blast, to reach us by next Monday, please. And don't forget, the Bad Influence magazine is in the shops from Saturday. It is necessary motto. Saturday morning, 9.25, what's up, Docs on? Grateful for your company for that. Failing that, back here for Bad Influence next week. Ta-ra. See ya.